lover won't bark Mama's gonna buy you a horse and cart If that horse and cart fall down You'll still be the sweetest little baby in town There will be times Now that is a good way to start off the new year. Ladies and gentlemen, Daryl London is here in the studio. She is uh, now diving in the world, into the world of kindy music, and that's what we're going to talk about. So um, why? Why are you doing this? Well, I have a nine-month-old and a three-year-old, so I used to make what I now call grown-up music. <laughs> yes. Um, I did three records of that. I've been making music for about 10 years, and then uh, three years ago, I had a baby, and nobody told me, like, seriously how I would stop sleeping. <laughs> People kind of joke about it, right. but they don't sit you down and shake you and stare you in the eyes and, you know, warn you. Yeah. So um, You will turn into a different human being. A different human being, uh, functioning on a very poor level. Yeah. And uh, so I didn't sleep for about a year, and um, I would just be singing day and night, rocking my baby, trying to get him to sleep. and. Yeah. Of course, singing all the old traditional lullabies, but needing to engage my brain and my songwriting mind. And so I would come up with new weird parts and change the words and just sort of mess all around with them. So that's kind of how <laughs> that became born. So I, I recorded the album when I was pregnant with my second, and then uh, I just put it out in the fall. Okay. All right. First thing I really actually want to talk to you about okay. is um, Acton? Acton. Drive. Is, is that where you grew up? I grew up in Acton, in a farm, on a farm, about yeah. five minutes outside of town. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually lived in Toronto till I was nine, and then my parents were just done with the city. Yeah. So we uh, we moved out to Acton, got some horses, and were kind of faux farmers for a while. Faux farmers. Yeah. There's lots of them, by golly. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, yeah, and um, my parents just sold the farmhouse recently, so they had it for about 20 years. And did they move back into the big smoke? Uh, no, they will never go back. No. I went back, but yeah. uh, they, they live in Guelph now. Okay. Well, that's pretty smoky. For Compared to the farm, it is. Yeah. yeah they're used, getting used to having neighbors again. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> um, what don't you like about people's prejudgment when it comes to the kind of music that you do, you know, to children's music, to, to, to kindy uh, music? What don't you like about that? I haven't, I haven't really felt a lot of harsh judgment, and in some ways I feel um, like I'm less likely to be judged because my music has always had this really playful side to it, yep. and sometimes I feel like in the um, like the indie realm, I, I feel like I've kind of had to temper that or you know control it okay. so that I wouldn't be judged or that I would be taken seriously. Yeah. But then in kids' music, I can just unleash it you know and so nice. i feel like I, I haven't really felt a lot of harsh judgments i guess the judgments would be that you know a little bit dismissive as in you know you're not making st you're not making real music or yeah but do you know there's some serious coin to be made in the children's music scene man i mean i haven't seen it you haven't yet. seen that coin yet <laughs> no i'm sure there is i mean the wiggles they, i yeah. i read the wiggles are like the most well-paid entertainers in australia they are yeah. When I was raising, uh, when I, when I was grazing, when we were raising the kids in Australia, uh, we lived there for five oh, years. Okay. The Wiggles were just massive okay, there. Okay, yeah. Right? But they yeah. don't think they were as massive internationally, and now they are everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah we listen to them, too. Um, okay, let's do a tune, shall we? <laughs> what song are we going to do first? I'm going to start with the title track of my album. It's called Sing to the Moon. Beautiful. And it's about... Um, how once you have kids, the things that they love become the things that you love, and you can't even help it. That's what happened with me anyways. I have two little boys, and um, I never and, thought... And you now love poopy diapers? It's not poopy diapers. No, I love trucks. I don't love trucks, but I know everything about them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I do get a little bit excited if I'm driving and I see you know, a really nice cement mixer or really? car transporter. You that need, was not you me need before. to get out more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get out at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the song called again? Sing to the Moon. Beautiful. Live on the Drew Marshall Show, uh, the one and only Daryl London. You like trains and trucks and buses. You like everything with wheels. 
You like going on adventures. You like playing with your meals. But lately, your very favorite thing to do is sing, sing, sing to the moon. You like counting. There she is, ladies and gentlemen, Daryl London on the Drew Marshall Show. Thank okay, you. so here's the thing, right? When it comes to having children of your own and this whole, I, I'm sorry, but they're within the lullaby scene, mm-hmm. uh, if you're going to write a lullaby album, that means that you're in, you're in, you're admitting and that you're also in touch with one of the most spiritual, I think, awakenings in the world, having mm-hmm. children. Yeah. And then when your children have children, et cetera. Okay. And uh, and I'm I don't like to put uh, things on other people, but I wonder for you. I, I'm going to ask this the most generic way possible. When you had kids, do you think there was a spiritual awakening that came with having kids? And if you do, how do you like? What did that feel like? What did it? What did you now? What did you then notice that you weren't really really noticing before? Mm-hmm. Okay. Other than lack of sleep. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think. Well, I I was raised Catholic and. Um, I do go to church. I don't go to Catholic church anymore. Okay. Um, we kind of church hop a little bit. So, but anyways, when you're raised with um, God presented to you as a parental figure, yeah. Um, I think then once you have kids and you experience the amount of love, then it's like okay, I can. I mean, that's how I want to imagine God, and like I, if this is you know the kind of love and like this is what i want yeah Yeah, you know what i mean so there was that and then there's just also the immense gratitude it's hard not to feel so grateful and it's hard not to view your kids as a gift because you just love them so much and they bring so much joy and i just feel like i didn't do anything to deserve this you know i don't i didn't earn this Mm. and it, it does feel like a gift so it's definitely um, I, I I definitely feel a feeling of of gratitude mm-hmm. and just thankfulness. Right. So, Sing to the Moon, a whimsical journey towards bedtime, with a mix of original tunes and old classics with a twist. Can you give us a quick example of an old classic with a twist? Um, what does that sound like? Sure. Oh, you want me to play it now? Yeah. Oh, I understand. <laughs> 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 um, this is uh, this is Rockabye Baby. Okay. And um, uh, the thing that I liked about messing around with these old lullabies is that some of their messages sound so weird, and some of their lyrics are so weird. Like Rockabye Baby, it's like a baby. There's some scary, there's some scary and stuff. It's, it's gonna fall, right? I mean, that's that's how I read it. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so I added this chorus about um, "I'll always catch you." That's kind of oh, I like that the idea. So sort of soften the blow. Soften. The blow. <laughs> soften the blow. Like, don't worry, baby. I got you. I got you. Yeah. yeah. rock a baby on the treetop When the wind blows, the cradle will rock When the bell breaks, the cradle will fall And 
down goes the baby, cradle and all. Rock a bye, baby, gently you swing. Over the cradle, mama will sing. Sweet is the lullaby over your nest, the tender. as dear as baby to me we little hands your eyes are shy tight now sound asleep until morning light when the wind rocks your soul you're out of control like a boat trying to make its way home in the storm let yourself go I'll always catch you I'd never let you free fall for long rock a bye baby on the treetop when the wind blows the cradle will rock when the bell breaks the cradle will fall Tell me about the very first lullaby that you wrote. Can you remember it? The first one I wrote is uh, one that I think I'm going to play in a bit, and it's called Little Love, and that was one that it really came to me at like 3 in the morning. And it's um, on the record, it's the one that's most for the parents. Okay. And it's just one of those really like, it's pretty vulnerable, and it's just when all the weight of everything, the responsibility and the yeah. love and yeah the joy and the pain everything just kind of like came crashing down on me and that's the song <laughs>
it's not everything there is You'll always be enough for me All I can do is try For all my life to be enough for you There she is, knocking it out of the park again, Daryl London. Uh, Daryl, I have uh, grandchildren. Wow. I have a two-year-old granddaughter, Elora, and well, two and a half, and one and a half-year-old twin boys. Oh my. Uh, Finn and Hudson. Okay. Um, are they too young for for these kind of tunes? No. No, this is who they're for. I mean, yeah. it's for the kids. It's it's also I'm, I wrote them to be soothing, hopefully for the parents as well. Yeah. Um, and I, I ordered the tracks as kind of a, a nice gradual wind down to bedtime, so okay. it's like most upbeat and then more and more and more mellow. And no, they're for babies. They're for little kids. They're for they're for everyone. Nice. Yeah. It's so interesting the traje- trajectory of parenting and how it correlates, as far as I can imagine or uh, I get, sort of get it with with the spiritual you know potential god stuff mm-hmm. and, and so it starts off with what you just said with I think we could summarize it by saying when your kids love you even though you've been a jerk that's when you really understand unconditional mm-hmm. love yeah yeah right mm-hmm. now later in life you still love your kids even though they're jerks mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's uh, what it must be like for god yeah Totally. Right? So and it's... Yeah. Sorry, it helps you... No, sorry. I was just going to say, it, it helps you kind of get it, get it, get that sort of presentation of yeah. God as, you know, if my kids did this, this, and this to me, would I would I still love them? Yeah. Like, yeah. they they could totally be jerks. I mean, he, they are, he's three and he's a jerk all the time, but I, I love him. Your son's a jerk all the time. <laughs> he's there. Aren't all How three-year-olds three, jerks? How can a three-year-old be a jerk? Well, I mean... Not intentionally, No, can of they? course not intentionally, but I mean, they're all narcissists, right? <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> so well said. Can you write a song? Because you seem like a lovely human being. And there are some people out there who are parents who are not lovely human beings. Right. Can you write a song for parents that are just not happy? Um, I could think about that. Yeah. Like, like, because you... you you have a double-edged sword when it comes to writing lullabies. They're for the kids, but they're also for the parents. Because quite often times, the yeah, parents are laying down with the kids, trying to get the kids to go to sleep. Yeah. And, you know, so they're listening to it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. You could subliminally help out parents that are just at the end of the rope. Well, that's the thing. I understand. Um, yeah, it's hard to understand people who look at their kids and don't kind of like feel that that love. Um, that's really sad. But uh, I can understand burnout. I can totally understand burnout. Like yeah. we we... How, you know, my eldest is in preschool, so I have that help, and we have help from our family. So, um, if someone's doing it alone, I could totally understand burnout. I could, I could think about that when I'm writing, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I love my kids a lot, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to. Um, okay, can you do another song for us, please? Yes. What song are you gonna do? This is called Sheep, and uh, it's about. Is when it off the? Never mind. Sorry, I was gonna make a dad joke. I'll shut up now. Yes, tell us about the song Sheep. <laughs> You can make it after if, okay. if it's still there. Okay. Um, it's uh, <laughs> sheep is about when you are counting sheep, yes. but they are being all crazy and it, it all goes awry. How many sheep can I count after the lights have gone out? I'm pretty tired, but they keep me wired the way that they frolic about. I spy a mischievous ram that you is chasing or lamb. He's always naughty, life of the party. Oh, he's such a lovable ham. They jump on my bed. I count in my head. Again, 
It's been an hour or two, but these are a rambunctious few, and the chaos is mounting. But if I stop counting, they'll cause a hullabaloo. Am I already asleep? Could I be dreaming of sheep? Now we are floating over the ocean, and I can see everything. We'll jump on the clouds. I'm counting out loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Till my eyes are open, I'll count again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Love it. Well done. Daryl London on the Drew Marshall Show. Thank you. Wait, you know what? I just really like this music, and I'm actually happy. I think this might be the first time I've given a gift from the show to my uh, children. Aw, thanks. Yeah, this is good stuff. I'm so happy to have had you here. I really Thank am. Thank you so much. I wish you the best.